All right, all right. Episode 15, we're here. It's Feeney Talks with Friends. Uh, we made it to 15. You know, Thurman Munson. It's Thurman Munson's my guy. Check out episode 14 with Becca and Vanessa about Nala's Kitchen. We're doing a fundraiser. All the proceeds are going to go to our organization, our nonprofit. Uh, use Feeney2021 for your promo code. And I appreciate that. Again, this is episode 15. My name is Eric Feeney. Uh, I run Friends of Feeney. It is a nonprofit and it helps children and families that have heartbreak or tragedy. Um, and we're using this avenue thanks to Dave Shimaluski. Oh, man. Shimaluski. 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 I practiced like 10 <laughs> times. Episode 15, you think I get it? Shimaluski. Shimaluski? Yeah, you got it. I'm going to spell it. All right. So, anyway, thank you to Dave at Direct Line Media, my main guy. We're like tight, if you could tell. Dave. Um, and we're here with a wonderful guest. Hey, Brooke, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, very excited to talk with you. Yes, thank you. Uh, we run in the same circles in multiple places. Uh, number one, you're a mom of two. Yes. Right? Um, Rose and Finn, my guy Finn. Yes. And you, we have run in the same circles through like, um, well, number one, let's just start. Thank you so much. For being a celebrity guest server at Donut Crazy. How was your experience at Donut Crazy? It was my privilege. Uh, lovely. So fun. Who doesn't want to serve donuts? Every <laughs> Now, this was pre-pandemic. And um, best donut, donut place ever. Yep. And uh, tons of people. Wonderful turnout. And for a great cause. What so, half an hour block? Who, who were you working with? I Remember? was with, yes, Dennis House and... Jeez, I can't remember the other woman, but great, yeah. great time. It was at the end of the day. Dennis House also had Scott. Scott is the president of the um, flag football. Him and House are good friends. Oh, okay. But Scott, he's not that important, Scott. You know, Scotty, <laughs> Scotty Mack, that's my buddy. We're just busting. Um, yeah, Scotty Mack claims that he had the most popular sp hour, uh, half an hour block. He did the best. He brought them all there. And I said, definitely, Scott. I think it was you. It had to be you. It might have been. It might have been. I do have some pull or... Actually, it's it's funny. I feel like um, ever since the I've become a mom, and the story about Finn came out, which I'll talk about a little bit in a couple of minutes. Um, you know, no one really knows me anymore. I'm just Finn's mom, so and that's fine too. So yeah, Finn. Yeah, we met. It was uh, Sedgwick uh, Miracle League has a Halloween party every year at the Miracle Field. As they happened to be raining, and it was at Sedgwick indoors. And I see this cute little kid shooting ball baskets. He loves basketball, by the way. We just shot basketballs yesterday. Um, and I, then I remember him seeing from, seeing him around the school. He, I taught third grade at the time and he was in second. Uh, excuse me, he was in first, kindergarten, jeez. And he has the coolest, um, I like, are they U2 t-shirts? Cape Cod with the Shamrock T-shirts, a couple band T-shirts, yes. and I'm like, this is the coolest kid. Yeah, I've he ever has seen. quite the collection: AC/DC, yes. Van Morrison. <laughs> yeah. Those, those are his bands. So as you can tell, I'm a big T-shirt guy. Uh, I got my fighters for Finn yes, here. Yes, thank you for representing. Yep, this is this is awesome. I'm so proud to to, uh, to be a part of it, and to help support and just well. well speaking of fighters and Finn, let's go. Um, please, yeah, so elaborate. Fighters for Finn, so I've been on the board for the Down Syndrome Association of Connecticut for a couple years now, and they have an annual walk called Step Up for Down Syndrome. That's going to be this fall. Um, it's going to be virtual again this year. We were kind of debating whether or not we were going to do it in person. It's at the um, baseball field in New Britain, nice. um, but it's a really large event. There, uh, The year before last, there were almost 2,000 people there. So just for safety reasons, yeah. we just thought we should do it virtual more, one more year. So um, everyone forms a team, and our team is Fighters for Finn. Love it. Named after my son, Finn. Yeah. I love the alliteration, Fighters for Finn, Friends of Feeny, Friends yes. of Finn. That's my guy. Mm -hmm. So that's a wonderful organization. And are you the vice president? Or the... I'm the vice president, yeah. yes. And um, How long have you had that role? I have had that role two years now, Nice. and um, we joined when Finn was a baby, because when Finn was born, um, we were a little out of our element, because needless to say, we didn't know anyone who had Down syndrome. 
we were very new to the disability world and joining the Down Syndrome Association was kind of like our lifeline to other people who had kids of all different ages that were there to kind of just give us that guidance and say, I know it seems really scary, but it's not. And these kids are awesome mm -hmm. and it's all going to be okay. Wow. And sometimes you, you know, you just need someone who can relate to what you're going through. And uh, the Down Syndrome Association has all different types of programs for, from people with little babies to kids in, that are a little bit older to um, older children. And then the biggest thing is about two years ago, we opened a literacy center in New Britain nice. um, to help children with Down syndrome learn how to read. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. I love hearing that. I saw that it's in New Britain. Yes. Do you go, is there like monthly meetings or? Uh, I'm sure you're doing Zoom meetings now. Yes, we're doing Zoom, but monthly meetings. And then so basically um, our, the walk that's in the fall um, and then World Down Syndrome Day are two of our biggest events throughout the year. So before those two events, there's a lot more meetings and a lot more planning. But other than that. Now is uh, Fighters for Finn affiliated with it? Is it a branch off of that or is that your own thing? That Yeah, that's my own thing. Um, you know, we, when Finn was a baby, it, it just so happened that, um, you know, I was posting pictures on social media and I got into the habit of just posting pictures every Friday. So then a, a friend of mine, she said, geez, it's like Finn Friday. So that's kind of how that hashtag okay. no, I love it. came about, Finn Friday. So then I just started posting pictures on social media. I want to him. tell you, I think you post around 6.30 because I look forward to them. 6.30 uh -huh. in the morning. Because yes. I'm like, what's he going to look like? I was honored to make one. Me and my guy Finn did a selfie. Yes. Um, so I was honored to, to be a part of Finn Friday, hashtag Finn Friday. Uh, so I really appreciate just connecting and um Throwing friends of Fenia bone, so that yeah. I really appreciate that. It's a great hashtag. Well, you know, it wasn't until I really got involved with the Down Syndrome Association that it really opened my eyes to um, all the work that people who work for nonprofits how much goes into it, and especially now with COVID last year, if we can partner together, it it just makes it. It's such a benefit for everyone. Oh, yeah. yeah, grow your network and your spider mm -hmm. web. Is it a nonprofit? Uh, Soon to be? The Down Syndrome Association is. Okay. Fight, Fighters for Finn is just simply our team for the walk every gotcha, year. Gotcha, yes. gotcha. Yes, so th well, that's not an official nonprofit. I will be, uh, if, if I'm allowed, I would love to join that team and do the walk. Oh, great. Thank so, you. Yes, yeah, we appreciate it. Me and my family, my girls, and my wife would love to. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah great kids um and then it's great that you kind of tag friends of uh, finn friday and you you know you sh you shout out a couple reporters do you have like a favorite reporter you like to shout out or you like them all uh i like them all yeah um but i have to say um courtney zeller on nice. channel three she has an aunt, Aunt Pam, who has Down syndrome. Uh -huh. So we kind of have a special connection there. And then um, a couple years ago, uh, two years ago now, there was a great story that came out about Finn and um, a neighbor of ours. It's a story of kindness. Yeah. Someone, um, our neighbor Todd, who's awesome, he made a bench for Finn because Finn loves flags. Yep. And so he, we take walks pretty much every day. And he would sit on his sidewalk in front of his house to look at his flag. And he, at the time, he didn't know us. And he's like, oh, this poor kid is sitting on the sidewalk. He's like, I'm going to make him a bench. So we had met him very, very briefly, just kind of, hi, how are you? Oh, I'm sorry, we're not like stalking your house. <laughs> Our son just loves your flag. So he remembered that his name was Finn. So he handmade this bench and wrote his name on it and just left it in front of the tree. Wow. knowing that we would be back eventually. So Channel 3 picked up the story, and the story went viral. And we were like, oh my gosh, this is great. We're like, this is our five minutes of fame. We were so <laughs> thankful. So we're like, okay, well, that's done. Wonderful. 
So then, you know, we were joking around, my husband and I, he's like, oh, you know, wouldn't it be great if, <laughs> you know, just joking around, if it was on Ellen or Oprah, and, you know, talking about this, all these different things. And I said, oh, you know what? I said, this is the type of feel good story that, and I could almost tear up talking about it, that Steve Hartman would have on um, because my dad loved Steve Hartman and my dad passed away a couple of years ago. So sure enough, couple days later, I get a phone call from New York City, and I let it go to voicemail, and I was like, that's strange. Who's calling me from the city? <laughs> and it was the producer for Steve Hartman and Nora O'Donnell for CBS Evening News wanting to do a story about the bench because they had seen it on the local CBS station. Wow. And then it just kind of blew up after that. So is that on the road? Is it the show on the road or on, is that something on, else? On the road with Steve Hartman. So oh. it was on the CBS Evening News, and then they aired it again on Sunday morning. The show Sunday morning, a month or two later after that. And that's national. National news. Wow, that's fantastic. So it was great. So I got a ce- I got a selfie with a celebrity. You did. Finn, yes. Finn is celeb status. He is. Wow, that's fantastic. And that fits with be a good friend model, your neighbor, Todd. Yes. Thank you for being a good friend, Todd. That's very nice of you. Like, you didn't have to do that. He did that out of the goodness of his heart. You know, that's like picking up trash, holding the door for someone, or just thinking of others. And that is amazing. Yes. And that's what neighborhoods are all about. And that's, West Hartford is very, has a great neighborhood feel. Like, my neighbors are great on my street. And that's just fantastic. I, I agree. And like you said, I, I get a little emotional. I cry at This Is Us. I cry at like um, Disney movies. And even Marvel <laughs> kind of got me at the end. And so when yes. you're telling me that, that, that yes, that's it, touching it, stuff it, right it there. It doesn't take much. But yeah, I mean, it was just, it was such a great opportunity. And it's opened up a lot of doors for us as far as people knowing who Finn is and wanting to meet him and talk to him. And it opens up the door to having conversations about disability, which is not really an easy conversation for a lot of people, frankly, which I totally get because that's why I think a lot of people get very caught up on, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of different things with disability and and it's very challenging. And sometimes people make mistakes, I guess, when they're asking questions or they don't phrase it appropriately. But I just, I always say to try to say to other people with children with different types of disabilities you have to give people grace it's like remember how it was before you had your child i didn't know anything about down syndrome i didn't know anything about autism finn's got a dual diagnosis of both so you know it's um it's it's an education every day things are changing and we're learning more and more and i don't think anybody ever asks questions with malice or trying to be mean they're just inquisitive and i mean kids are the best they're just extremely direct but kids are a lot more open um adults i think it's a little more challenging because if you're over you know if you're over 40 years old you probably didn't grow up with kids like finn in your classroom so it's a big so it's it's awesome, though, to see a lot of the kids educating the parents or the adults. No, I love it. I see it every day. Um, and back to what you said, I just had a whole lesson for autism awareness and putting the person first. And you did that. You were like, because the kids even said, I had a, a correct a kid and teach a teachable moment where it's like the Down syndrome boy or the wheelchair kid. You don't want to say that. You want to put the person first, the, you know, my classmate who has Down right. syndrome. Right. And then, exactly. like you said, adults might not even know how to do that. Or, you know, that person there have abilities and disabilities. Everyone has abilities and disabilities. That's what makes us unique. And, you know, strengths and areas of concern and, and areas of growth. Right. So. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. And also, I have a student. Uh, she did a whole lesson and presentation. She has an older sister that has Down syndrome. She made T-shirts. I learned, um, it's a huge word. You could probably correct me. Trickle cell 21 or... Oh, trisomy 21. So there's different types of Down syndrome. But the most common is trisomy 21. 
Trisamine. Yes. Yes. I know. It's a, it's a little tricky. Yes. It was great that the, the little kid's reading it, and she kept bumbling it, and then the mom, like, put the word on the screen, and I was like, oh, perfect. And she also started messing up chromosomes, was also important. Um, yes, because kids with Down syndrome have an extra chromosome. Yes, and the kid so. yep, learned all that. Well, I, I, know, I knew that. I just got a nice little refresher right. last week. And um, also I have a friend uh, read a book, Liam's Special Language. Liam has um, autism as well. And his sister, Lila, and the mo- mom, Kim Jewell, wrote a book. She's a woke mom. Oh, wrote awesome. a book, Liam's Special Language, and how it's from Lila's perspective and how he communicates with a uh, you know communication device, an iPad, and how he shows how he's excited when he cheers and he's mad when he stomps his feet, and it's just like, you know, that's how we communicate. Everyone communicates. Right. No. I know when I know when Finn wants me to shoot, and I know when Finn wants me to pass him the ball. Right. So right. Just just you get to know him. Right, and I think that's the thing that's challenging for people is that. People like yourself and all the kids that go to school with him at Wilkett, they're so awesome and so welcoming. And but they all know him. Just kind of um, my daughter Rosie, she went to Duffy Elementary. So when Finn was little, I would always take him to Duffy. So they would all know him there as well. Um, and they know that he's nonverbal, but they also understand that even though he's nonverbal, he understands. Even though he can't speak he can only really say a couple words he he really can understand the majority of what you're saying to him and um so the challenge becomes more so at the schools within the district that maybe don't have any children with down syndrome um because down syndrome isn't as common as let's say autism so um yeah just you know trying to educate people and and letting them know that it's okay to ask questions, it's okay to approach him. You know, uh, for parents, you don't you don't need to shush your child. It's it's okay to say, oh, you know, instead of saying, Shh, you know, or or don't point at him. You know, I I try to be very open with people and say, oh, you know, does he or she want to come over and say yeah. hello to Finn? You know, he loves new friends. So yep. um, yeah, we just say just say hi, just yes. say hello, right? And I I try to teach my students my daughters just you know say hi to everyone so that's great and then you do the rock your socks which is an amazing initiative yes so that started when finn was little too so um when finn was little i noticed that the school district there wasn't really too much going on as far as down syndrome awareness and i had heard from some other people and other people in the country had seen that they were celebrating something called world down syndrome day which is every march on march 21st and um we do a rock your socks event which is just a fun way of trying to pull the kids in because socks kind of look like chromosomes so that's the idea Uh, where the idea of the socks came in okay see like if you look at a picture of chromosomes under a microscope they they look like a sock so that's where the idea came from so um we wear mismatched or bright colored socks we read books about down syndrome on that day um this year I had to do it virtually because I couldn't go into the classroom. Um, and you know, anyone who has a child with Down syndrome just shares their story just to um, you know raise awareness yeah. and acceptance for That's kids amazing. with Down syndrome. Do you have a go-to book? What's the read aloud? Do you remember it, or do you well, do a different one every year, or different one every year? Um, and actually, the Down Syndrome Association a couple years ago started a book donation program. So we donate books every year to not only local schools, but also to libraries, uh, because we found that there was definitely a lack of books with characters with uh, kids with Down syndrome in them. So there was a definite need. So that's been a great program. Um, So we're looking to, we've been expanding it a little bit more and more every year, um, but that's yeah, awesome. It's great. We love it. Rock your socks. That's great. No, I, I love that. I just, <clears throat> I got, uh, you're, oh yeah, you know Patricia at Sock Stars. Mm-hmm. 
we are co collaborating on a project for Design Your Own Sock. We have a winner, Allison, congratulations. Her sock will be produced and sold at Sock Stars, and we did a whole contest. And so I went down there to talk with her, and I had to get the, the autism socks with the puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. And then she said that she knows you, and you've been working with her, so that's fantastic. So the connection is continuing. Yes. she. Um Sock Stars, we had two local West Hartford companies do fundraisers for us for World Down Syndrome Day, which was so awesome and generous, which was um, Sock Stars did a fundraiser for us leading up to World Down Syndrome Day, and then Homegrown Studios, which is a art studio um, that's local here, and they sold a sock puppet kit. Oh, nice a little twist on the rock your socks idea, which was awesome. And we were just so appreciative. Where is that homegrown? Um, Shout them out, is it in the center? Yes, or the... no, it's um, across Rubeck? from, I can't think of the name of the, the restaurant right now. Um, but I met the owner, her name is Meredith Donnelly, uh, because both of our kids went to Duffy. Oh, nice. So that's how I got to know her and, um, but beautiful art studio for children of all backgrounds they invite everyone yes that's awesome yes does finn and rosie go uh or? they haven't she well, now, obviously. well right and she opened up her studio right before right before COVID hit basically wow. a little over a year ago so it's been so homegrown yes homegrown right. studio shout you out homegrown yes. we'll be there i'm gonna send all my students to you yes we're passing spread the word that's fantastic. But yeah, um, no, Patricia's great. The, she, again, the so whole community, great. I'm an, um, a member of the West Hartford Chamber of Commerce, and that was like the, the best move I've ever made for the nonprofit and just companies. That's how the Donut Crazy thing got started. That's how I met Dave at Direct Line Media. That's how I met pretty much every podcast guest. I My business I cards. Have, I think I'll have you to should, join. Yeah, you can go, you can be a guest if you want and join. Okay, that would be great. And uh, be a guest of Friends of Feeney or try it out maybe... Um, yeah, they would love to hear your story, and they're just so wonderful, caring community. And, and yeah, you would fit right in. It It'd is. Be it, it's, a, it's a wonderful community. Between the support for World Down Syndrome Day from the businesses in the center, Sock Stars, Homegrown Studios, and then the schools, you know, we started off with one school, which was Whiting Lane, because that's where Finn went to preschool. Gotcha. And it's just grown and grown and grown. And now it's all the elementary schools and the middle schools and the high schools. And and our hope with World Down Syndrome Day is to expand it throughout the state, which we have. We have had some success, but anyone out there, if you need help, you know, approach it. Some people are just, they don't even know how to approach their district or just approach the principal. I can put you in. I'm your lady. Yeah. Give me a call. Reach out to me. I'll help you out. Brooke Daly. You heard it here first. All her information will be on the bottom of the podcast. Email, phone number, social security number, everything. <laughs> Credit card. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, if you want to connect with Central Connecticut, I know a guy. I know, you know, I got friends. That's great. My neighbor, Tom. We, he's we a good, love he's that. He's a great guy. That's awesome. So three things that to, to run... You know, from Fighters of Finn, Fighters for Finn, excuse me, and to also be a part of the Down Syndrome organization. Like, if you were to give advice for three, for someone that's interested, what would you like three important steps? Um, did I explain that correctly? Uh, three things that would be great to do what you do. Oh if you goodness. were, if you had a mentee. Oh, if to mentor people. Yes. Oh my goodness, that's a tough question. Put you on the spot. Yeah, geez. Um, well, you know, I find for me, it's somewhat easy because it's personal, right? So I guess... Find the personal connection. Yeah, find the personal connection. That's a good one. For whatever your passion is. Yep. And then things tend to fall into place. Um, that would be number one. Number two, networking. You can't do it no one is an island you can't do it by yourself it's so important to get help from others whether that's people within your immediate community extended community um people want to help they really do you know the, yeah. you just need to give them the opportunity so there's number two let me see what number three is uh, you're doing great by the way yeah thank you um geez i don't know 
just uh, just stay positive because you'll also have people say no to you and i learned that early on that there were a lot of people that believe it or not they're like no you know we think we're good you know yeah. <laughs> we we don't want to spread down syndrome awareness and i'm like really okay um but um you know i think you just need to show people the value and you have to maybe finesse your story and show them the importance behind your story um, because these kids are part of our community they're you know your neighbor's son cousin uncle you know and everyone should feel welcome within the community bottom line and everyone should feel included like we all belong that's, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. That's that's the message. And your number three is a popular one because I ask that question to, to a lot of the guests. You know, I'm Stephen King with business cards. Don't be afraid to get no. Relax the back or bards, Matt selling suits. You know, you, someone's going to say no. And you just don't get disheartened and just keep trying. I love the stay positive. Can't beat that. Stay positive. Yes. So those were great. You, you handled that perfect. Oh, thank that was you. awesome. Thank you. Woo. Now we're on a roll being a teacher for 17 years. Uh, do you have a favorite teacher or a favorite, someone that inspired you? It could be one of your teachers. It could be Finn's favorite teacher. Right? No, I'm kidding. I'm not even his teacher. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he does love you. He loves you. He lo well, you know, his first teacher at Wolcott was Sarah, Sarah Mahegan. And oh, yeah. she's awesome and just like so sweet and he loves her. Yep. And uh, his have you ever did her cycle? Do her cycling? No, class? I've heard about it though. I've done I'm, it like three times. Oh, I'd love to do that. Drenched. Really? Yeah, she's awesome. I didn't know her in that in that way. I just that see capacity. her in school. She's like, "Come on, let's go, let's bounce <laughs> and go." Yes, yeah, see, let's go. And I'm like, oh, I'm dying. Yeah, I don't. know She's that very side cool. Of her yeah, she's so good. She's yeah. fantastic. But she's just got a very calm, sweet demeanor. And then his, his paras, which stands for paraprofessional, because that's the other thing about um, kind of the disability special needs community. They use a lot of acronyms, which is, yeah. uh, it's, it's tough because if you don't come from that world, how, yep. would, how would you know what we're talking yeah. about? But uh, PPT so, 504, oh, SST. Stuff. And... It's so challenging at times. But um, yeah, his paras, who are basically people who go in to help Finn stay on task, um, last year he had two ladies this year because of COVID he only has one, Mrs. Griffin. And we just, we love her. She, she's just patience of a saint because Finn can be very stubborn. He's, he's a great kid, yeah. but just like any eight year old boy, oh, you know, course. he's stubborn and doesn't want to do things. No, at I times. see their interaction. She's fantastic. Chris yes. Griffin, shout out to Chris Griffin. She's the, I call her Griff. Yes. Griffin, <laughs> Griff. That's my mom's, that's my mother-in-law's maiden name. So I'm like, and Chris Griffin, Chris Griffin is on um, Family Guy. So that's Stewie Griffin, uh, Peter Griffin, <laughs> Chris Griffin. But I, I had that whole conversation with her. So my, and then my wife has an uncle, Chris Griffin. So, but she's awesome. It's a Griffin. Small, it's a small world. Griff, yes. keep up the good work. Yeah, she's great. Though. Finn loves you. We all yes. love you. No, I love um, the paraprofessionals this year because of COVID are like the unsung heroes and the MVPs. They work their tail off and Absolutely. they care so much. Uh, re I recently lost one. Deb Kramis was at the school for 13 years. We worked, I might get a we worked together all year last year and she unfortunately lost the battle with cancer oh. and she just passed away like a month ago, two months ago. And we were like, didn't know her at all. But then, you know, she's in my room working with two students all year. We just became so tight. And uh, so, uh, I'm so sorry. And Deb's sorry. family has, um, you know, they chose in lieu of flowers, they donated to Friends of Feeney and it was just touching, Aww. touched my heart. And I, I want to thank Sarah and her cousins and her mother and her mother-in-law. Thank you to everyone who supported. Her mother was a, um, a crossing guard. So they supported and it's just, um, it was heartbreaking. So that just on the paraprofessional, I just thought of that. So. Right. And then Nancy Sohn, she's the secretary of this, uh, Nancy Wallace Sohn. Uh, she's the secretary of Friends of Feeney, and she's the main reason it started, because she lost her husband. She's a paraprofessional. Yes, the she's hardest. lovely. Yes. Yes. 
Yep, I love. She's family, and uh, so. Right. I'm just. I'm so thankful that the kids are back in school and they're doing. They're doing well, and everybody's doing the best they can to keep the kids safe. And um, Finn just. Um, you know having special needs, not being able to really do the whole online thing. My daughter, Rosie, who's 11, same age as your girls, yeah. right? She, um, it, it was fine for her, the whole online thing. You know, she's she's my tech person, like yeah. for computers and all things technical. Finn had a really hard time dealing with it because he just, um, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't understand. No, he it- doesn't know how to he doesn't know how and he really has no interest in interacting with people over the computer. Oh no, it's it's difficult so. on everyone. As a, as an adult, oh. I find it challenging that that you know the mannerisms aren't there, the connections not there. Um, no, it's just uh, interaction. I, that social piece is key for students, especially younger students. Yes. So I'm I'm just so thankful so happy that West Hartford is is back in school. It's and great Rosie's friendly. hilarious too. She's like Feeney, Mr. Feeney, I should come on your podcast. You know, once I was named line leader at school, which I thought was hilarious. And, and I would have brought her, but she she would have dominated the entire conversation. That, that which, was the, I thought about that all day. She's like, you know, like a kid showing off of all their, she's like, I got line leader. I'm like, yes. that's funny because like, that's like, you know. Well, and I will say too, definitely she's a future advocate. She is such a supporter of her brother and um, every year at Duffy, she was pretty much in charge of helping put together the World Down Syndrome Day event. Nice. So yeah, so she's she's a very motivated kid. No, that's great. And yeah, thank you for being such a good big sister. Yeah, she's wonderful. It shows that you care and you have a a great sense of humor. I would hang out with. I would. I, I wish she was my student in my class. That she's, would be. She's awesome. Yeah. You could tell she has like that sarcasm, that wit. The, yes. She definitely does. And you want a little sass, you know, but not too much. <laughs> so I have a good balance with my girls, you know. Yes. You want them to be assertive, but not, you know. So I like that. Exactly. That was great. That was so exactly. Good. So you talked about Finn's teachers. Do you want to share your teacher? Are we you good? You're moving on? Uh, Where'd you grow up? Poughkeepsie. Oh, Poughkeepsie, wow. Poughkeepsie, New York. Nice. Yeah. So that's, that's far where, away. That's where I'm from originally. Yeah, my uh, was it public schools or public schools? Yeah, nice. had a very good experience. My um, my dad worked for IBM. Everybody's dad worked for IBM in Poughkeepsie <laughs> back in the day. That not so much anymore, but uh, yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. And what, what about um, oh, back to Finn? Like, not only was he on CBS, but like he joined the SWAT team for a day or two, and like. Marched in formation and did the flag ceremony. Right. That so, was like yeah, two of the very cool things that kind of came out of us being on the news. We got two very cool invitations. One, uh, there's a SWAT challenge where uh, law enforcement from all over the United States comes to do this competition. I knew nothing of this but before um, before we were invited, and uh, one of the police officers from West Hartford Police Department called us and uh, said, hey, you know, would Finn like to be a guest and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance because we know how much he loves the flag. And we're, we're like, yeah, that would be great. It'd be our honor. Again, this was two years ago, pre-COVID. Um, we got to meet the chief, which was awesome, and so many other Is wonderful- it the same current chief? Yes. Vern, Vern Riddick? Yes. That's my guy. Great guy. Great guy. From Waterbury. Yes. And then um, we had that opportunity, and then we also had the opportunity. We had been invited, and I, I don't know the name of the meeting. The meeting for all the teachers to kick off before the beginning of the year. Oh, wow. Uh, convocation? Yes. At Conard? Yes. So they invited uh, myself and Finn and Rose, and... Um, again just to do the pledge of allegiance and so i warned them ahead of time i said i said uh you know i'm not sure it it was different because with the swat team event it was outside and all the people were spread out no one was really near finn this was finn has a lot of sensory issues because of having down syndrome and autism so i made a critical mistake which was 
I walked through the auditorium before going around to the stage before we were called up. He way, way too many people in there and everybody was grabbing at him and were, you know, saying congratulations. Well, it's overwhelming on, on for me, so I couldn't imagine. There's a lot of people. Yes. Complete meltdown. Complete, complete meltdown. So but again, Rosie Daly to the to the rescue. Was that last year? Two years ago? Two years ago. Yeah. Rosie stepped up and she did the pledge for yep. him because he, he wouldn't even go out on the stage. No, I was there. That was awesome. Yes. And I was like, I know him. I know I know the dailies. Rosie did great. That yes. was awesome. Well, you know, yeah, it's just honored to talk with you. You're doing wonderful things. Uh, you're you're a wonderful person for this community. We're better for having you in it. And uh, I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. And you're a good friend, definitely a good friend. And you spread the positive vibe. And you have, you know, just, you know, and because of all that, you were honored for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. A fellow Irish, Mick. Yes. <laughs> Yes. The, uh, again, um, two years ago. No, I'm sorry. Well, right before COVID last year, I apologize. I was supposed to march in the parade um, as honorary and so, so excited. But because of COVID, no one marched. And um, That's a fun event at Town Hall. Yes. Yeah. That crew, I'm so happy. They invited Friends of Feeney and we marched the year before. Who got me in? I forgot. Um, John Stone, right? Is he, yes. He's awesome. John's and, awesome. And they just had, you know, they raise money. They have the, their the party, and then they have the marching, and it's like right. Johnny's Jog, a lot of West Hartford, and then they have the different honorees. Yes, we. Um, you know, were you so with Mark, or Mark, Mark, J Mark Yaman, your Mark, Mark Jamin, or were you with the guy who runs Weha.com? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, we're so lucky to live in this town. Like, I just think of, like, um, the Down Syndrome Association, Friends of Feeney, Johnny's Jog, Miracle League. Yeah. There are so many great small nonprofits that, um, you know, again, if, if people are looking for volunteer opportunities. Please. I'm with you there. Yes, please, please step up because um, so many great organizations worth worth your time, and if and if you have it, worth your money. Yeah. Well, anything else you'd like to add? Um, the only other thing I wanted to add is, you know, by all means, if you're come this fall, if you're interested in uh, joining our team, Fighters for Finn, and I'm sure we'll have a couple of fundraisers before then. And uh, we're actually, the Down Syndrome Association kicked off their first uh, virtual 5K that's going on right now through the end of April. So you can uh, check that out on the Down Syndrome Association of Connecticut website if you'd like. Yeah, and definitely check out the hashtag Finn Friday. I love the Finn Friday. It makes my Friday. Oh, thank you. And um, yeah, Dennis House, he likes and shares it a lot too. He will be a guest. Dennis House will be here. He's a friend of Feeney. Brooke, tweet at him and say, hey, get out here, Dennis I will. House. He's a great um, guy, too. Again, I can't thank you. It was a wonderful talking with you. I can't, you know, I would love to collaborate more. We'll be at that March. And uh, thank you, Dave, from Direct Line Media for making this all possible. Again, Eric Feeney, um, founder of Friends of Feeney. Our mission is to help children and families that need assistance after heartbreak or tragedy. We have a couple fundraisers. Connard, um, Allison, a student reached out to me and she's into ceramics. She started making the ceramic bowls and, and cups and mugs, they're beautiful. And on the bottom, she, she etched in uh, Be a Good Friend. Awesome. And for her uh, mastery experience, experience project, she's gonna raise money and auction them off for Friends of Feeney. So again, the community, I don't know her. I, I don't even know, I don't think I know her mom, but it just, wants to go out and build these beautiful pieces that she put a lot of time and effort in and, and is going to auction and give 100% uh, of the proceeds. And it's amazing, you know, um, again, I mentioned Nala's Food Kitchen, uh, Nala's Kitchen, doing a fundraiser. I can't thank the community. Look into the Nala's Food Kitchen. Episode 15 here at Brook. And, you know, be a good friend and fighters for Finn. Thin Friday. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, Dave. Thank you so much, gentlemen. 40 minutes with Feeney? Come on. On the dot. 40 minutes with Feeney. Bet. Let's go.
Let's go. Thank you, Dave.